Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, Luke here. And today I'm gonna to be going over a pretty in-depth view of the Uconnect system in the Charger Challenger 300. You'll see it in a quite a bit of other FCA vehicles. Um, I'm gonna do the performance pages first because I know that's what a lot of people wanna see. And it's pretty in-depth, uh, but check the description below. I'm gonna link everything else if you wanna see how the phone section works or how the climate control section works. Um, and uh, stay tuned for the next video as well because I have an intake on the way and I also have some mini race bullets coming. I'm actually going to delete the mid muffler and put in the mini race bullets. So uh, I also have a track day coming up this Thursday, the very first one. So I'll put on the drag radials and see how she does. I'll have plenty of video for that. So stick around and enjoy the video. Okay guys, what I'm going to do today is go through the Uconnect in the 2018 Charger Challenger 300. Uh, this is going to be in a, quite a few different FCA vehicles for the model year, so everything will work pretty similar. Um, like I said again, you should be able to skip to a certain section. If you look in the description, uh, I should have everything labeled down there uh, on what you want to skip to. Performance pages. Now I've got mine down here and I added it from the apps menu, but if you're on the SRT page, it's always in the upper left hand corner here so you can get to it from right there. And you've got a few things on the left here that you can do. On the home page it just basically gives you what they call widgets. So you can you know have your horsepower, your little g-force meter, your current gear, or you can actually click to add another widget. So you can have timers or another gauge. You just hit plus and you go down through here and if you want boost pressure you hit plus and now your boost pressure is there which is kind of neat. Um, if you have a this little camera button here, if you have a jump drive in your center console, you can actually take a picture and a little screenshot this and uh, send it to your jump drive. So it's kind of neat. Hitting the settings button right there will kind of give you an overall view of what you can do for all the widgets. Going into timers, uh, this is pretty straightforward for all the super track pack stuff. Uh, you know, zero to 60, zero to 100, eighth mile quarter mile braking distance uh, you can have your current last best which I have not done any of them okay, clicking on gauges here um, this is going to bring up a few different pages of gauges I rhymed <laughs> so you've got oil temperature coolant temperature oil pressure battery voltage hit the little button up here to switch to the next page gives you a few more things here which is pretty neat boost and air fuel which is kind of cool and then your intake air temperature Ooh, I've been sitting for a while now what's cool about this as well is if you uh, want to track these in kind of like a dyno style timeline number, you hit these little arrows here. It's going to expand that and actually show you over the last 60 or 120 seconds what that was. So when I rev it up you can see that it went a lot higher there. So this is something that you can track which is kind of neat so if you did a run you can you know see how you did what your air fuel ratio was and so on and so forth hit the little button here to get back so that's kind of a neat thing g-force meter so you know this is going to show you you know if you're on the track and you want this up your braking acceleration and right to left g-forces and it goes up to 1.5 g's um, here i'll have your peaks your steering angle which is kind of cool so my peak front G's was 0.8, right 0.85, left 0.78, and rear 0.85. So that's the best I've done so far. The engine just has a neat little gauge here that has boost pressure in the middle, torque on the middle gauge, and power around the outer ring. So when you're driving, that'll kind of give you an idea of your horsepower. Here in the dyno, it's going to show you kind of like a, a history of your horsepower and torque, kind of like earlier, except you can change it from 90 or 120 seconds up here. You can see that going up and down. Now what's cool is this gear thing here. If we were actually driving, whenever it shifts, it puts a little notch of first gear here, second gear there, third gear here, which is kind of cool. You can actually stop it, analyze it, and then play it again too if you'd like. You can go all the way down 30 seconds. 
And of course, you can screenshot that again. So that's the performance pages. Uh, it's really neat stuff. And um, I actually didn't know that this was that involved. I had the performance pages on the Scat Pack, but it is not nearly this involved on the 2017 model. So I know a lot of this has changed for 2018. Okay, on to the SRT pages. So if I click SRT down here at the bottom, or I go into the apps section under SRT mode, which is the same thing, it brings me to this screen here. Now this basically just lets you set up the driving modes. You've got a couple different ones here. You've got auto, custom, sport, and track. And basically what it says there, automatic, it's gonna keep, if you have the red key, it's gonna automatically default to the 707. And if you have the black key, well, it's going to bring you to 505. It keeps the transmission in street mode, paddle shifters on, traction on street, suspension on street. Now, you can set up the automatic mode along with the other ones. You just click on this arrow here. And if you want it to be 500 horsepower all the time, well, you can do that if it's in auto mode. You can select a couple different things here. Now, in the auto mode, it won't let you tweak the transmission, the traction, um, and I think those are the two that it won't let you do. But you can turn paddles on or off, and the suspension you can change to track or sport. Just hit back. Same with custom. Custom just basically lets you check all of them. It lets you pick everything you want. So that's what I like to use because custom mode. I like track mode, but if you're just driving down the street, I don't like the track suspension because it's really bumpy. So I keep it on street suspension. And I actually like my street traction, because there is none in this car. But my transmission, I like to be on track and, of course, keep the paddle shifters on. So you just tap whichever way you want to do it, and then hit the back when you're done. Same with sport mode. It's defaulted to these features, but you can go into the sport setup and change a couple different things, but not everything. Because basically, they're just presets. And track mode again. Track setup. Not a whole lot you can change because it's basically a preset by itself, is all that is. When you go into race options, this is basically your launch control. So um, a lot of people don't use launch control because I'll admit it's, it's just kind of cruddy. It doesn't really work that good. Plus, the best thing about this car is when you're on the track or trying to launch, you usually only want it about right around 1,000 RPM, maybe 1,100 RPM from what I've heard and tested myself. And you can just do that by power braking. But if you want to try it, do a burnout or something, show your friends, you can just click up or down for what you want the RPM to be. You can also change your shift light here if you want it off or on. If it's on, then the shift light RPM you can change it for every different gear, which is kind of cool, but I just let the car do its thing because I think it knows what it's doing better than I am when it comes to shifting automatics. Oops. So here, if you hit activate launch control, normally, and what it would do is, it would tell you to hold the brake, push the gas, and away it goes. Valet mode is actually kind of neat. Um, this is if you want to, well, give your car to somebody else and you do not want them driving it hard at all. Um, I actually put it in valet mode sometimes in the rain because you just you can't get this thing to go fast. I mean, I think it takes it out of first gear. Uh, it um, limits the shifts to you know like 3,500 RPM, maybe even less. Um, you can put your foot all the way down to the floor, and it only gives you about 25% throttle. So if you want to put it in a valet mode, you just push valet, hit yes. It asks you for a pin code, so you just put in one, two, three, four, and there it is. See, reduce engine power, launch control, disable street transmission, paddle shifters off, street traction, and street suspension. So it's it just kind of does all that for you automatically. It won't even let you go into SRT pages until you disable it. There you go. Eco mode is kind of just helps you with the throttle response. It makes the pedal 
a little bit, uh, you know, less sensitive transmission shifts a little earlier, takes the paddle shifters off. It's also nice for rain mode if you don't want to do the whole hardcore valet mode. So that's basically the SRT pages. Most radios are equipped with Sirius radio, HD radio, AM and FM. So how you would switch between the two is either touching right here. So you've got a Sirius XM, FM, and AM. Pretty straightforward. Uh, also, usually on the steering wheel, which I'll show you, there's a button that you can push on the back left side of the steering wheel. I'm sorry, back right side of the steering wheel, and that'll shift through the different sources as well. It'll also go over to your media section if you keep switching the sources, and it'll go through Bluetooth, <coughs> auxiliary, USB 1 and 2, depending on how many USBs you have. The button on the left is the one that goes through the uh, presets. If you want to set a preset, all you do is just push and hold. You've got one, two, three, four, five, six here. You've pushed this one here, it brings you over to seven through 12. Tap it again to go back. If I wanted to save this as a favorite channel, all I would do is just push and hold the one for about three seconds. There you go. So now that's my number one preset. You do the same with all the rest. Now, if you wanted to change channel, you could either use the knob on the right to go left and right, or you can tune with these arrows here, one at a time, or if you know the channel, just touch tune in the middle, type in the channel number, hit go, and that'll bring you to that channel. Now you do have browse over here. A lot of people don't really use it a whole lot because you know, it's just kind of odd. They would rather just type in the number, but you can browse it by channel by going up and down. Just kind of skips through a little bit and tells you, you know, about five at a time what you're going through, or you can search by genre. You've got game zone over here, which you can select your favorite teams, or you can go to just your presets. So this will search by only your presets or all. Hit the left arrow to go back. Replay, just basically what that does is it brings you to the beginning of the song that you tuned into. So if you tuned into a song right in the middle, you can hit replay and that'll take you back to the previous song, you know, or the beginning of the song that you're currently listening to. When you hit live, that'll take you back to the lot, you know, what it's broadcasting then. Hit replay again to get out of the replay mode. Traffic and weather is, uh, I, don't, I don't have it set right now, but basically all that does is it lets you pick a channel for weather. Uh, like when you push that button, it takes you to your favorite Sirius radio weather channel. Uh, a lot of people don't use it too much. Audio is gonna bring you into the audio settings. So from here, if you wanna change your balance fade to front and rear, you just tap the cording button, left or right. Equalizer, same thing, bass, mid, or treble, down to lower, or I should say minus to lower, plus to raise it. Speed adjusted volume, basically what it says here on the screen, it increases the volume level relative to an increase in vehicle speed. So I have mine off because I want my, my audio to say exactly the same no matter what I'm doing. Now, if you want the audio to increase a little bit while you drive and then lower a little bit when you come to a stop, that's what these basically do. One, softest setting. Three, the hardest setting, meaning it's going to make the most difference of turning the volume up and down when you are speeding up or slowing down. Now, when I used to use this, I did put it about two. That seems to be the best one for me, um, but I just like to leave it off for right now. Autoplay is just basically what it says on the screen as well. It'll, if you plug in a USB device, it'll automatically start playing when you when this is on. So that means if you plug in an iPhone via USB or an iPod, you know, or your Android phone, if you've got music on the hard drive, once you plug it in, it'll automatically start playing from the first song. Over here, if you push map, you're not gonna have the channel icon. You're gonna have the map for navigation. This is only on vehicles that are equipped with navigation. 
if you hit favorite that basically just lets you add a favorite artist or a favorite song to what you're listening to and it'll put it on a little list for you as far as FM and AM go they they work relatively the same um, when you scroll through here it works the same when you tune to a radio station here it works the same audio works the same the only thing really different here is your HD radio if you have that now when it's lit up like this that means you're gonna search for the HD radio stations when you have it off it's not gonna bother with the HD radio stations now if you're not familiar with HD radio it's basically like um, when they switched the TV to where you had to have a set top box but everything comes in a little clearer well that's exactly what HD radio is except for FM radio so what you're gonna find is when you have HD radio on not only are you gonna have a regular station that you're used to but then it'll try to if there's an HD radio station available it'll buffer once that buffering happens the station will come in a lot clearer now what you'll also notice if I can get one to come in here it is that there's gonna be more than one station on the station so you'll have 94.1 HD 1 and you'll have 94.1 HD 2 and basically you can get to those once it loads up by just hitting left and right it'll just go to the next HD radio station once it's buffered so basically that'll give a radio station multiple stations within their station I guess is a good way to put it now not every one of them is like that but a lot of them are and you'll see the number pop up whenever it's loaded. AM, pretty straightforward. It's just like the rest. All you're going to do here is tune or set a preset. On to the media section. The media section is going to be anything that you basically have connected to the vehicle. It could be a smartphone through Bluetooth or an iPod through Bluetooth. You could have something plugged in directly with a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary cable. And then there's two, I have two USB ports in my center console and that's what those would be for. You basically just touch it and it'll let you connect. Now here it says I don't have one connected, but I like to pair a device. This is the same thing that you'll see when you want to pair a phone to the car, which I was gonna go through in just a minute. So I'll actually save that for later. Auxiliary, I don't have anything plugged in, so it's not gonna do anything. Same thing with the USB devices. I don't have anything plugged in, so it's not going to do anything. However, I do want to show you what it would look like. So let me see if I can plug my phone in and just give you an idea. Well, now I've plugged in my phone and I just started up Google Music and pushed the recommended new release. So you can now see that here on the screen once I'm in the media section and I've pushed on USB. Now this will work the same for uh, if you just have music on your hard drive it'll show if it's got the clip art or the album art there it'll show it and then what the title is now most of the time if you've got a smartphone you're going to be using android auto it just works a lot better i'm going to get into that section in a little bit later um, over here the map does the same thing it'll show you the navigation screen if you want to info just shows you a little bit more about the title track artist album if it's available and then tracks will pop up if you've got an actual list of tracks uh, that you want to play as far as like a playlist um, or you've got multiple songs on your device when you're streaming it doesn't really work like that it just kind of goes with what your phone is showing you at that current moment if you wanted to shuffle or repeat they're in the upper and left hand corner to use that okay controls is actually more of a pop-up than anything when you push it it's going to bring up the controls for heated seats vented seats heated steering wheel for the driver and the passenger, your mirror dimmer, and then settings, which we'll get into. When you want to turn it on, you just tap it once, and that brings it to the high setting. Tap it again, low. Tap it a third time for off. The same with the vented seat. Once for high, once again for low, and then once again for off. Your heated steering wheel usually only has one setting, so you're just going to either turn it on or tap to turn it off. I'm going to leave my vented seat on here. Same thing goes for the passenger side. Now the mirror dimmer, when it's orange or red or whatever color you have, sometimes it's blue in the Chrysler's, that is what is going to you know, initiate or tell you that it's on. 
when it's colored. If it's white like that, that means you do not have the mirror dimmer on. Of course, what that does is it just automatically dims the mirror if you have someone with their high beams on at night. If you notice, that screen will actually go off after a few se seconds if you don't touch anything. That's because, like I said, it's more of a pop-up. Now, we'll go into settings here and uh, try to do this section by section to give you a little idea on what you can do. Touch on controls, then hit settings. Now this brings you into all of the settings of the car. You can change a lot of things in here. And like I said, I'm going to try to break this down and go over each one so you can get a better idea of what they do. All right, guys, so we go into language. That's pretty straightforward. I mean, it's going to be on English, hopefully. If not, there's a couple other languages. Now, what you'll notice here is there's always a, a back button here and then an X button. Now, they pretty much do the same thing other than X. It's going to take you all the way back out. Whereas back is just going to get you back to the main menu. So in display, you're going to see display mode as auto or manual, and that's just basically going to make it uh, brighter or darker whenever the lights are on or off. Usually you would put that on automatic. Now here you can say display brightness headlights are on. You can manually change that, of course, if you're in the manual mode. Display brightness when the headlights are off, and you can manually change that. Outside of that, when it's in auto mode, you can change it with the um, the dimmer switch over by the light switch. Setting the theme, when you tap on that, it gives you a couple different themes to choose. It's going to load, and you'll see in the background here, you've got a little staging light, just some gray lines, some more gray lines, and the Hellcat is what I had it on but you can just scroll up or down through a few of those and choose which one you like. The touchscreen beep, pretty straightforward. You can probably hear it there. If you don't want it to beep whenever you touch the screen, I kind of like it. it. Just gives me a little extra feeling that I'm actually touching what I was supposed to. Now this is what was uh, kind of going on earlier, the control screen timeout. So if you don't want this screen to disappear after a certain amount of time, then you would uncheck that. I leave it on because usually if you're turning your you know, heated seats or cooled seats on, you don't want it to be there permanently, so I just leave that on. Navigation next turn pop-ups displayed in cluster. So if you've got navigation equipped in your car, that just means it's going to show up in the cluster or EVIC screen. That's the one that shows your speedometer in between your gauges. So we're going to go back here. That was that section. Now units, all it is is just basically either US or metric. So if you want miles per hour, kilometers per hour, all that kind of good stuff. Now here if you want to get a little bit, you know, technical and you want your speed in miles per hour but your distance in kilometers, I mean you could do that. Um, you know, so that's, I guess it's kind of neat, but uh, you know, usually you want either all or none. So we're going to go back. Now voice. Here, uh, voice response length, uh, most cars that have Bluetooth and all that are going to have the voice command system. So this is either going to give you a brief response whenever you say something or a detailed response. Now, if people are just starting out, I usually tell them to leave it on detailed. That way the, the car is going to talk to you basically every step of the way when you're trying to do something. Once you've gotten used to the same message over and over again, click it back to brief. Show command list. Now this pops up whenever you push the VR button on the steering wheel. There is a green button, a red button for calls, and the one in the middle is the VR button on the left side of the steering wheel. That means when you push that, I'm going to go ahead and do it, this list comes up here telling you basically what you can do. Now if you're used to this and you don't need it to be there, Canceled. that's what this section is for. So you can either have it never with whenever you say help or always. Um, I bring it up always because I don't really use it that much to be honest. So if I really have to use it, I just it doesn't bother me to have the the you know what the commands that I can say up there. So that's what that setting is. The clock pretty straightforward. Um, if you've got navigation in the car, you're going to be able to sync it with GPS, so your time's always going to be right. Um, you would just pick whether or not you want 12 or 24 hours, and that's more of the military time style. And AM and PM, you're not really going to be able to select that if you are syncing your time with the GPS. However, for people that don't have navigation, it's going to look more like this. You just hit plus or minus 
to change the time, the minutes, 12 or 24 hours, a.m. or p.m. The camera setting, it basically just gives you two options here. Park view backup camera delay. Uh, what that is, is when you put your car in reverse and the screen comes up for your backup camera, there's two settings. If it's off, whenever you put the car in a drive, the camera is gonna immediately disappear. If you want it to delay or stay on for a few more seconds, that's where you would check this button. So you're gonna roll forward for probably a good three to four seconds before it actually shuts the um, rear view camera off. Now I had that on for a while in my other car and I thought it was, you know, that it was good. And I mean, I guess it's just a personal preference. That's why it's here. You know, in case, uh, you know, there was a kid that came out or there was a dog or something. But um, after a while, I wanted to be able to push more buttons on my screen. Like most of the time you're backing out somewhere and you want to go and, you know, you want to change your air conditioning controls or your automatic seat controls or you want to kick it into, uh, you know, a track mode or something. Well, you can't do that because you're waiting for the backup camera to go away. So I turned that off. Um, it, it ended up being a little bit more of a nuisance to me. So that's what that does. Active Park View Backup Camera Guidelines. That's just basically when you're in reverse. See if I can just put it on here for you. It is going to turn the little lines whenever you are turning the wheel. Most people like to have that on. It's kind of a neat feature. If you don't want it, the lines will just say straight and you can leave that on. Okay, we're gonna skip down here because we're on camera. So safety and driving assistance. When you click on that, it's gonna give you a couple different options if you have the safety tech package in the car. So this is the blind spot, um, you know, the park sense, that kind of stuff. So the beeps when you back up, you can have two different options, either have it just make a sound or a sound and a display. So that's gonna show you in your EVIC, in between the gauges, you know, how far or how close you are to something. This is how loud it beeps at you when you're backing up. Low, medium, or high, just check the one you want. Blind spot alert, you can either just not have the blind spot alert on. You can have the lights only, which are in the side mirrors, rear view mirrors, sorry, side mirrors, not rear view. Or lights and chime. So that's gonna have the lights, the little arrows light up in your side view mirrors, and it's gonna make a beep audible through the stereo system. Hill start assist is actually in automatic cars. Um, if you are on a slight incline at a stoplight, let's say, and you've got your foot on the brake and the light turns green and you go to take your foot off the brake, the car will not roll back for a few seconds until you get your foot on the gas. So that's what Hill Start Assist is. Uh, pretty good idea to have it on all the time, but it's an option. Mirrors and wipers. Um, this is uh, something that I kind of like. This is only in certain cars, again, if you have the package. To tilt the side mirrors in reverse so with this car being a little bit lower i like to back in pretty much everywhere i go um, if you're also the same way what this does is it tilts the side mirrors down that way you can see the lines better when you're backing up now some people might not like this and that's why there's an option for it headlights with wipers it is a law in florida if you got your wipers on you need your headlights on so that's a neat package if you have it Going to the lights, this gives you some options on your lights, obviously. So your headlight off delay, this basically just means when you get out of the car, you lock it, how long do the headlights stay on? You can just change it by hitting plus or minus. Headlight illumination on approach. Illumination. So this just means for the people that unlock their car, not remote start it, if you unlock your car, how long because the headlights come on how long will they stay on you know until you get to the car so that's what this setting is headlights with wipers just another section for that one we just got back from daytime running lights if you want them on or off you know nice to have them if you got them flash the lights with lock so whenever you lock your car do you want the light to blink or not going to doors and locks auto unlock on exit so Basically that means if you are getting out of the car with the car off, it's going to automatically unlock whenever you shut the car off. So that's what that setting is. Some people like it, some people would rather unlock the door when they're ready. Um, so that's what that setting is. Flashing the lights with a lock, it's kind of the, other, the same as the setting we just saw when you hit the lock button on your car, does it flash. 
Now here's a different one if you want the horn to sound whenever you lock. Off, first press, or second press. Sound horn with remote start. So when you got to do remote start, you got to push it twice on your key fob. It's going to make that horn honking sound twice. If you don't want it to do that, you want to be a little bit more stealthy, then you would uncheck that. I personally like it because if I'm walking out to my car, sometimes it doesn't work. And if it didn't work, it kind of stinks because then your car is all hot. You don't know it until it's too late. So here you have first press of key fob unlocks just the driver door or all doors. So if you are just walking up to your car and you want to unlock it, normally you would have to do twice on unlock to do all doors. Well, this gives you the choice of one unlock does all doors or just the driver door. So whichever one you want, you just touch it. Passive entry on the cars that it's equipped, that's just where you walk up to the car and as long as you have your key fob on you, touch the door handle, it's going to unlock the door. If for whatever reason you don't want that setting on, you uncheck it. Okay, we're going to go down here and there's only one more setting and that's the personal settings linked to key fob. So what this is, is you know normally you're going to get at least two keys with the car. Now what you can do if you have memory seats or you know basically the memory steering wheel and the radio stations all link to the memory button on the driver door. You can also link this to your key fob. Um, I'll try and do a video or at least put in the description on how you do that. Um, it's just a couple extra buttons you push, but outside of that, what that would do is, let's say you have the husband and wife. Well, husband and wife have different seat settings. Husband and wife usually have different key fobs. Well, if husband comes out and remote starts the car or unlocks the car, it's going to go to his seat setting his radio setting, his steering wheel setting automatically. If wife remote starts the car or walks out and unlocks the car, it's going to go to her personal setting. So that's actually a really neat feature that a lot of people don't even know exists. Let's go back. Auto on comfort. So this is basically if you have heated seats, vented seats, steering wheel, all that, if you wanted to come on automatically and let the car judge if it's hot outside, it'll put on your air conditioning seats or if it's cold outside, it'll put on your heated seats. So you can do it, just not have it on at all, only when you remote start, or even if you get in and push the start button, it'll do it for you. So that's what those three settings mean. Engine off options. So when you turn the engine off, you push the engine start stop button and you're getting out of the car. Easy exit seats. Now this is gonna be only for the um, people that have the memory seat feature. What that means is when you push when you push the engine start stop button and you're going to get out of the car it will move the seat back for you automatically. That way it's just a little bit easier to get out and in of the car. So what'll happen is it'll keep it there. The seat will be back a little bit more when you get in the car and then when you get in the car and push the start button of course it's going to automatically move to your memory position. I don't have that on just because I actually found it a little harder to get out when I'm farther away from the steering wheel because the steering wheel actually helps you get out of the car. Um, and then I felt like I was falling into the car more whenever the seat was back so far. So I took that out, but that's a nice option for some people. Engine off power delay. So this, ba I'm actually gonna turn this up to five minutes. Um, all this means is if you're in the car right now and you hit the engine start stop button and you didn't open any doors, how long the engine is going to, sorry, how long the power is going to stay on. So how long is the radio going to stay on? How long is your gauge is going to stay on? Some people like that just because, you know, maybe they pulled in somewhere and they're just waiting for somebody to get off work and they want their radio to still be on, but they don't necessarily need the engine on. This will be canceled automatically when you open the door. So again, if you turn off the engine, don't open any of your doors, this is how long the ignition will stay off or on before you have to manually turn it on again. So you'd have to, you know, not put your foot on the brake and then push the engine start stop button until you're back into accessory mode. If you open the door, it will automatically turn off the electronics in the car. This is again, the same setting from earlier, headlight off delay. That's like when you, you walk, uh, you know, how long it's going to take to turn off your headlights once, once the engine's stopped running. I'm going to skip down here, and we were at engine off options. So now going to audio, this is just going to take us back to that same place we were earlier. But if you didn't see it, or you skipped forward, 
uh, into balance and fade in your audio, just tap the corresponding button if you want it to go forward or rearward, right or left, equalizer, plus or minus, for more or less bass, mids or treble. Speed adjusted volume is basically going to let you increase the volume level related relative to an increase in vehicle speed. So I have mine off right now, but basically what that means is if you are driving, it's going to bump the volume up automatically for you. And when you come to a stop, it will turn it down. This is just basically more sensitive the higher you go. Autoplay just means if you plug in a device, it's going to automatically start playing via USB. Phone and Bluetooth. I'm not going to touch on that because that's a totally different section. It brings you over to this section, the phone section, which I'm going to go over separately. Sirius XM setup tune start just basically means that if you want it to start from the beginning of the song when you switch, it'll activate that for you. So it'll kind of let you do that replay feature from earlier if you stuck with me through the whole video. Channel skip. Um, this is if you want to take out channels that you don't use and you're never going to use. That way it just lets you tweak your XM list, which is kind of nice. So if you'll never use Hits 1, then tap it. If you'll never use Venus, then you tap it. And basically that won't show up when you're browsing through the channels on XM. Subscription information. This is if you want to, uh, you know, if you're calling to resubscribe and they ask you where your radio ID is, this is where you find it, Sirius XM ID. Of course, it gives you a little number if you want to call, or it also tells you if you have all of the satellite radio stuff, travel link, and everything, and you're subscribed. Now, of course, I, um, you know, having this car for less than a year, you get all that stuff for free for a year. Reset. Well, um, that basically is going to let you reset a couple settings. What it means by reset app drawer is actually the next section we're going to go over. This is the apps here. Um, so if you've configured your app drawer, which is what I'm going to go over, that basically lets you reconfigure it or it just resets it back to the way that it was restore settings i mean that basically means you're gonna everything we just went through if you customize it it's going to reset everything we're not going to do that clear personal data that means if you've got any personal settings at all in here this is like a complete reset uh you put in your address for navigation you know you've got your phone in here it's going to clear everything out so we're not going to do that and then system information is just kind of like it doesn't really do anything to be honest okay so we're going to go into the climate section now um, this is pretty straightforward um, it's it's all the same you know buttons you'll see down here usually um, but if you have an automatic climate control function that's what these degrees do over here you want to bring it up to 74 degrees or down to 70 degrees just like your thermostat in your house now if you move the driver section when you've got this sync button on, that is going to automatically move the passenger section, as you see. Now, if the passenger touches it, okay, it automatically unlinks it from sync and will never control the driver side. You can scroll if you'd like. Hit sync to bring it back to the driver side, to where they mesh together. Now. Here you've got, of course, the same buttons you're used to seeing on other things. The face button, feet button, face and feet button, and the rear defrost and feet button. Now, whenever you push any of these, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take it out of auto mode. Whenever you're in auto mode, it's going to figure out all that stuff for you so you don't have to worry about it. Now, what you can still do in auto mode is recirculation. Okay, when it's red, that means it's on. When it's white, that means it's off. So you're getting fresh air in and recirculation. Max AC, of course, is going to blast it full. Fan on full, temperature on low. Also takes it off auto. Now, when you're on auto mode, you're not going to see the AC button actually on, although it is working. Um, now, if you click the AC button, it's notice the auto mode went off. So that's taking it out of auto mode. When you put it back in auto mode, the AC goes off, but it's technically still on. So keep that in mind. If you want the climate control completely off, you push this button here. 
and that's going to take all the climate off, but it leaves you with your heated seats and heated steering wheel button. Down here you'll see the fan speed. It's going to say auto if it's on auto because of course it's controlling your fan speed. But if you'd rather just manually control it, tap the small fan for lower and tap the big fan for higher. When you hit auto, that'll go back to auto and control the fan speed for you. Now over here you'll see the front defrost and the rear defrost buttons. You'll also see them down below on the controls. Now here you'll also get the same screen you saw earlier with the heated and cooled seats for the driver and passenger. Just touch them to change them from high, low, off, high, low, off. That'll also disappear after a few seconds if you haven't touched it. So that's basically the climate control section. Okay, if you want to pair a phone, uh, you're just going to tap on the phone icon here. Of course, it is not doing it. <laughs> Every other time in the world it'll do it, but when I actually want to do the video, it doesn't show. Usually it pops up with, do you want to pair a phone? You just hit yes. It's easy as that. Now, I guess I'll show you the way to do it if, you, if that doesn't pop up. It says, go to pairing to add or connect a phone. So we're going to click on pairing over here. It says paired phones and audio devices. So tap on that one in the middle. And then it says add device right here. And then this is usually the screen that pops up automatically. Then you go into your phone. I've got an Android here. I've got my Bluetooth section here. One device has been found. You connect. Okay, so now it says Please confirm the pin matches your device, which it does. You hit the yes here, hit OK on your phone. It's going to prompt you on your phone if you have an Android to allow contacts asset access. There it is. You just hit allow. And then allow access to messages. I don't like the way that it handles messages, to be honest, so I'm going to deny that. I like the way that Android Auto handles it, and you don't need to have that permission to have that work through Android Auto. And there you go. So now it's connected, and you'll see the phone has a signal down there. So now you'll be able to stream things from your phone, and you'll also be able to use your phone. So if you go to media, and you hit Bluetooth, now that's going to, you can start playing a song from your phone. It'll automatically go through the radio. If we go back to the phone section here, you can add a favorite contact if you want to. Um, I don't, it probably hasn't loaded my contacts yet. Let me see, yeah, it did. So let's just say I wanted to do this one. I can hit star and that'll add it as a favorite. So now I have that contact up there as a favorite. There's not a whole lot in the uh, phone section that you're really going to use that you don't use on your phone. Uh, the keypad's right there if you really want to dial a phone number from the screen which you know you can just use your voice to do when you are driving contacts it just brings you to your list you can go up and down your contact list but you can do that with your voice if you want to see your recent calls incoming outgoing or missed you can see them right there just by tapping on them again your favorites are going to be over here on the main screen when you hit the arrow here, that just lets you see what the number is if you want to text them, you know, or un-add them as a favorite. If you need to add another phone, you hit the pairing button over there, go to paired phones and audio devices, and you can add another phone or device. Do not disturb. That basically lets you choose if you want to auto-reply to a text or a call. You can customize a reply message. Uh, basically, it sends a text that says, I'm driving, or something like that, and you can customize that right here. I'm driving, I will respond later. You can back that out, type in whatever you want, and it'll automatically send out that text message if you're driving. And that's the phone section. All right, so we're going to go over the app section here. Now, basically, you can think of this kind of like a smartphone. Um, you've got your main apps down here, and you've got all of your apps up here. Now, you can move any of these basically down to here to customize it. So we'll go through these individually, tell you a little bit about them, and then how you work it. So let's just say, looking at this, here's your driver event. 
So I use my driver vent a lot. So I want it to be down here and overwrite my controls because that's usually about the only thing that I use in controls. So if I push and hold it, it's attached to my finger now and I can bring it down here. Let go. And then now I can control my driver vent right from here. Now you can do that and overwrite a few of them except for the apps button. So Travel Link is basically something that you get with XM Radio that you can check local fuel prices, movie listing sports, weather, so on and so forth. So that's just a shortcut to get to that. SRT mode, that brings you into this screen, which is also a button that you'll find down there. Driver heat, passenger heat, passenger vent, you could all have those down there. Or if you want to just tap on them individually, you can do that right from here as well. All these buttons work. Projection manager is just if you want to use screen mirroring for your Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, you of course would have that checked. Wi-Fi hotspot, if you have that enabled, then this is where you would do that. How to purchase or if you want to set it up. I don't have it, so it's not enabled. The SOS button is the same as what you'll find up on the rearview mirror usually, and that's just if you're in an accident or you need trouble, you would uh, push on that. Same with the assist button, that's also next to the SOS button on your rearview mirror. And that's just if you want to talk to Uconnect. Now this isn't like, um, you know, roadside assistance. Let me take that back. It's not like, um, what's that other thing called? It's not OnStar. So it's not like OnStar where they're going to give you directions and things like that. But that is if you need roadside assistance. That's, that's basically what that's for. Vehicle user guide is actually kind of neat. So it does have the entire user manual built into the car. Now a lot of newer vehicles are doing this and this is where you would find it. So it puts a few main things here for you and let's just click on one. Reference essential, driving controls, warning lights. Then you would just hit on one. Say okay what about the airbag? You tap on it and it'll actually load up you know exactly what it wants to tell you about the airbag. It's actually kind of neat. Now if you know what you're trying to look for you can always hit search and then just type in what it is you're looking for. Send and go feature is basically if you have the Uconnect app and you have it paired to your car uh, you can you can pick a location from your device and then send it to the car and it will show up in this list. Whoops, I hit it. it, takes a little while to load. So you go over here, you have performance pages, which was what I had down here, which is what shows you all of the gauges and all that cool stuff. The app manager, all right, finally loaded up. Oh, let's go back. The app manager is basically just, if you wanted to delete a few things from that screen, this is where you do it, there's not a whole lot. If you wanted to heat a steering wheel, there's your mirror dimmer. Go to X, S, X, M radio, go to your media, your climate, controls button, your nav, if you want to bring your nav down here, the phone, put it back here, you want to have your settings out here, or your audio settings out here. Jeez, that was a hard acorn. So if you want to have your settings, see where you would normally get to it is if you were in, let's say, uh, you had, you were in here, and you went in here, there's settings right here or you're under apps and you're in your controls or in your client yeah that's just kind of a weird spot to put it so your settings is under apps and then settings and that brings you into this list that we went over earlier and that's about it for the app section so I basically touched on about everything that you could possibly go over in the uconnect um, you're always going to have your temperature up here, what you're connected to, your time, and the temperature outside, and whether or not you have heated or cooled seats on up here. So if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned to the next one. All right, guys. Well, that was quite a bit of information. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of it, or something out of it. Uh, stay tuned. Again, I've got my intake coming, and I've got my exhaust coming. Uh, so that'll be on the next video. And I'll be going to the track this week for the first ever run. I'm going to try to get a bunch of videos for you guys. Hopefully I have a good run. And stay tuned. Like and subscribe for more on the Hellcat. More tutorial videos. I'm going to have reviews coming up. 
I'm going to have 360 tours of vehicles, uh, so stay tuned for that. Um, anyway, thanks for sticking with me. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.